What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for a Tottenham update, yet another Tottenham update. And the first thing we got to speak about today is the uh, Supporters Trust. They've made, what was it, a statement? Um, yeah. In response to the former Tottenham statement, uh, talking about fans on the board and what have you, and but what's been said and what's like the general crux of what they've said. So they've made kind of a counter proposal to the Tottenham proposal about the fan representation on the board. As we know, Spurs um, kind of uh, a, a proposed an advisory uh, board, which would then elect a non-executive director onto the executive board, um, and he would have um, a, an advisory role on the board. Basically, well, the Tottenham Hotspur supporters trust have basically they have uh, suggested or their proposal is to have a supervisory board. Which would then, uh, which would be made up of three um, supporters trust members plus um, um, eight other um, Spurs among the Spurs fan base, diverse members of the Spurs fan base, and they would elect a fan director onto the executive board, and they would also want two additional non-executive directors who are both who are independent of the club to have a bit of oversight on the on the board. So they are proposing three di different separate directors to be put on the executive board, um, um, and they would basically have a vote on on the issues such as naming of the club, location of the club stadium, club colours and the crest, competitions the club plays in, location of competitive home games, sale of physical tangible assets such as the stadium or training ground, changes to the club's legal structure, the dividend po policy and the strat strategic plan. But out of all of that, what is actually genuinely up for discussion? Because the... The naming of the club's not up for discussion. The location of the club's not really up for discussion anymore. Um, what is up for the, out of those points? What is a general the competitions the club plays in? Yeah, Seeing that's as the pretty Super much. League, that's that's pretty much the only thing. That's isn't pretty it? much yeah. Because you know the sale, all the sale of the stadium or training ground. I guess the other the other bits and pieces literally is just seems to just to, to take up uh, well strategic plans. Space seems very in the paper. vague. Seems very vague. Strategic plan. What does that mean? Mm. Strategic plan for what? Footballing terms. Just where we go, where the club's going. Um, in that sense, it's pretty vague. Um, but that's kind of the general gist of what the supporters trust are um, kind of proposing to the Tottenham board. And we're interested to see what Levy responds to that proposal because it does seem like quite a lot to ask. Um, three directors on the board, but then again, that does seem like genuine. Um, like power, I guess, on on the board sense side of things, which is why I think that I don't think the club would accept it. But what's who's appointing these people? Um, who appoints the supporters trust, and um, and why does it only have to be three people from the supporters trust? Why can't it be three people, three Tottenham fans that are not involved in the supporters trust? It's the whole the whole sup the whole supervisory board is all Tottenham fans. Mm -hmm. For just three, eight, uh, they're say, they're they're suggesting um, a board of eleven members. Three of them will be supporters trust members, and then the other eight will be made up of other facets of the of the uh, of the of um, the fan base. It's a three supporters trust members because the supporters trust make up the largest independent supporters group. So they have the, so they uh, re that's the re they feel like that's representative of the fan base having okay. three supporters trust members on there. Basically, mm -hmm. all right. That's what, uh, what, what, what do you get from all that? Do you think first of all? It's highly unlikely that this pushes through. Yeah, that's highly what I feel. unlikely. I feel like it's a lot to ask from the Spurs. Like, not, not. I'm not saying it's uh, they're they're wrong to ask of it. I'm just saying from a Spurs, uh, from probably Levy's point of view and the and the current executive board's point of view, I reckon they'll think it's too much to ask. That's mm. why I think. Uh, I think they'll probably they'll probably say you're not getting to three members or you're not th you're not getting three directors on the board. Basically, I don't think they'll allow that. I think the fan director thing is viable and that's similar to what the Spurs um, were proposing before. But these two non-executive directors who are in non-executive independent directors on the board, I'm not sure who these people are and who and who they're uh, and how they're going to be selected. That's what I'm not sure about. Doesn't really say. Uh, just says um, um, they're just saying three additional club to include three addition of three non-executive directors, two independent and one nominated by the f fan supervisory board. So I don't know who these two in. I think these two independent directors are basically um, in conjunction with the government scheme. 
So maybe they'll bring oversight on into the board, and there'll be government um, uh, 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 appointed people, something like that. That's an independent government um, At oversight. the end of the day, the club are just either going to not respond or push back on it. So, I mean... <sighs> be interesting to see what people think. I want to know people's opinions. Um, people maybe who are smarter than us maybe getting their opinions on uh, this uh, um, proposal from the Supporters Trust and what they think of it. Because to me, it seems like um, um, the, the club won't go for it. But maybe uh, it is something the club will go for. Let me know in the comments section below what people think of this uh, potential proposal but at least things are you know the cogs are turning things are happening and maybe proposals are being put to the club and we'll see where it goes all right well let's see where that one goes but i th think i got a feeling which way it is going um but let's move on this one's from rob dawson of espn talking about um that man city move for harry kane now we brought you the news yesterday or a couple of days ago that um that man city will be willing to part with a hundred million plus one of Sterling, Laporte, Gabriel Jesus. But what Rob Dawson is saying, that Raheem Sterling would not be keen on a move to Tottenham as part of the Harry Kane deal, uh, which makes perfect sense to yeah. be honest, doesn't it? Yeah, and I'm sure Sterling's, uh, his sources have straight away, uh, he's been leaking, look, I ain't, have, I ain't having this Tottenham deal. <laughs> what are you chatting about? I've been main player for Man City for years now and you're going to ship me out to Tottenham. No chance. He's probably no saying chance. to Harry Kane, I can't wait to be playing with you next yeah, season. Yeah, exactly. Not not uh, being shipped out and replaced with you. I, look, I, I never thought Sterling would ever entertain coming to Tottenham, especially as well you've got to think he's on 300 grand a week probably at Man mm. City. So he'd be completely... Um, uh, destroying the wage structure at Spurs as well um, for a player who's not even as good as Kane. So he, if, to put someone like Sterling on more than Kane from a Tottenham point of view doesn't make much sense. And for Sterling's point of view, it doesn't make much sense either to uh, for him to entertain the move. All right, let's move on from The Athletic. It's actually uh, staying on the same, um, same topic, but they're saying Man City did offer Gabriel uh, Jesus, Sterling, Bernardo Silva, Riyad Mahrez, Emmerich Laporte and Nathan Aki, but Spurs are not interested in skewing the wage structure. Yeah, so that, that so that's I think from Tottenham's point of view, um, they're not interested in um, giving big wages to players who maybe are not going to be direct first team players. That's maybe what he's thinking. Um, but surely, a Sterling, Bernardo Silva, Mares, Laporte. We'll all be first team players there. Sorry, not first team players, but like, not that he doesn't want to give make them the highest paid players in the squad, basically. Like Kane deserves that. Do does would Mares deserve that? Would Gabriel Jesus deserve that? Would um, I think uh, Mares would? I think Laporte would. I mean, I think Mares would be uh, one of the best players we've got at the club. I think Laporte will definitely be one of the best players we've got at the club. Uh, Sterling probably would be as well. Bernardo Silva. Potentially. Yeah, but how you got to think of how much these players are on. They're not going to take a cut. Mm. So, for example, Bernardo Silva, what's he on? Maybe 200 grand a week? Or I don't know. Like, we what? Can check. like, does he deserve to be on more than what Son's on? You know what I mean? That's, uh, that's maybe what they're thinking. Look, I, I'm of the opinion that Spurs, if they want to be a big club, they need to start paying the big wages. Yeah. And that's what players should get. But I'm just saying this. I'm, I'm just saying from Spurs' point of view. Bernardo Silva's on 150. 150. So. Yeah, that's probably fair. That's probably <laughs> yeah, you know fair. I mean. And, you know, look at the other players. Laporte is on 120. Uh, who else was on that list? Mares is on 120. Uh, Nathan Ake is on 92. Jack Gabriel's on 90. Uh, was there anyone else we missed out? So they're all kind of within and our Sterling, weight structure. And Sterling. Raheem Sterling's on 300. Yeah, so, that, so that one that one makes sense, but the other ones don't really. Yeah. that's. I guess that's what they're... That maybe... That's what he's saying. And maybe he's saying they would want more money to come here because why else would Bernardo Silva, Mares, Laporte, why would they come here if it wasn't for a wage increase? Mm. Why would they? Yeah. They wouldn't. No. So we would we would maybe have to break the wage structure to I bring mean, them in. The only reason why they would come is that Man City are pushing them out the door. That's the only reason. Yeah, but they know... Um, yeah, Man City could well push them out the door, but they could just... They know they have a strong position, in my opinion, because if Man City do really want them out... And, th and they're prepared to leave, they could find a much better club than Tottenham. 
They could. Yeah. And, and it's not like so. It's, if if they're being forced out, they they from their position, they might as well wait for a different club. But why also, you got to first? think about it uh, from this point of view as well about finding another club that are going to pay the kind of money that Man City are going to want for them. Another a club to pay those wages in this kind of financial market. I mean, it's it's not that um, it's not that easy to do as it previously was. Correct. So, which is what even more reason to stay. But they might be pushed. Man City don't want them, obviously. So Man City are trying to push them out the door. Yeah, but it, but that but that only they're only going to be forced out if Kane comes in. Then like if Kane doesn't move, they're going to be there playing. You know what I mean? Yeah, but Kane Kane can come through the door at Man City without them leaving. Right. So if Kane goes there for one fifty, and these players don't get game time anymore, especially a, a Riyad Mahrez or a Bernardo Silva or Raheem Sterling, they're going to be sitting on the bench twiddling well, their thumbs. Mahrez and Kane are different positions, though. It doesn't I know unless that. they sign a replacement. Mm-hmm. So they, they mean that means them spending big they've money. Got Ferran means- Torres as well coming through. I mean, they've got players coming through, and they want to do a whole rebuild. So I, they've got enough money to bring players in without getting players out. So these players could easily rot away. No, I disagree. I think it would. I, I, I think that they could. I think they have a strong position, and you think they do. I, th- I think they could easily. I don't think Man City would just first of all, for try and they could try and force them out, right? to try and get in Kane but if that if they don't come to Spurs I don't think Man City are just going to be like well you're just going to rot away now I'm sure they can either find another club or they'll play them I really don't, I don't that's not a good situation to be in for Man City to have players unhappy rotting in but the that's, reserves that's the news that came out directly after the season directly after that Champions League final irrelevant of Kane uh, they were saying Pep wanted a whole rebuild from top to bottom in the squad they wanted to get a number of players out and that was regardless of Harry Kane Okay, so what, 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 that doesn't mean they have to join Spurs. No, no, I'm not saying they have to join Spurs, but what I'm saying is it's easier to join Spurs in a kind of deal with Harry Kane than kind of to join a random team who it be, maybe it would be Real Madrid don't really have the money, Barcelona don't really have the money. These top clubs don't really have the money at the moment. So it's easier to, to make the deal in a kind of swap deal with Harry Kane than it is on, on a general market. Potentially. But maybe Man City, if they really want them out that desperately, if they're going to willing to see them right in the reserves, and I'm sure they'll take a cut fee if they. And if it's if it, let's say if it's for Sterling and they take a cut fee, you still need another team to go pay him three hundred grand a week. Yeah, because he's going to have to take a cut anyway. Sterling and coming. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. Mm. But anyway, uh, that's just what I think of it. I think that I don't think any of these players, maybe Nathan Ake. Um, Maybe Nathan Ake will look at Spurs and being like that could be a viable option. Agreed. I don't think any of them. Maybe Gabriel. And I yeah I don't and I reckon Spurs as tough it is to as tough it is to hear. I reckon Spurs would probably be like well, we might as well get younger, cheaper players and mm. then save some money, like pay less wages, then have uh, Bernardo Silva stuck on two hundred grand a week and um, have uh, or have. Uh, Mares, thirty years old, stuck on two hundred grand a week. Like they will, they would probably go. Well, we're just going to get younger, cheaper players. Get some Inkudus in. That's <laughs> what I think. Great That's what I think, honestly. Great stuff. Um, let's move on. Fabrizio Romano talking about the Spurs manager situation. And he says they're talking to five different managers in the last week. I'm sure they contacted Ernesto Valverde on Friday. They were talking with Rangnick. Ten Hag has always been um, been in the air as well. I think that this week they will make a decision. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How many times we heard that? How many times we heard that? And that follows on um, the Athletic saying Daniel Levy wants to get the head coach search back on track this week and he will re-examine the original shortlist which uh, includes um, the likes of Ten Hag and Graham Potter in the next few days. Mm. So that is what uh, the Athletic are saying about the managerial situation. I mean, look, I mean, I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of the whole situation. I'll just get it over and done with already. Like, just have a plan go for the manager you really want and stick to it instead of this absolute craziness where we're pulling out managerial appointments we're going for other appointments that and we don't know what we're doing we're going for unrealistic appointments we're good talking to managers we know we're never going to appoint i mean i mean the whole thing's been beyond a farce at this point so i mean let's see what happens this week but i'm not holding my breath yeah Tell me about it. I mean, we've been we've been hearing it's imminent for like since the end of the season, literally. literally it's been two months imminent, 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 imminent. Oh, I mean, so much imminent I can take. And you know, we're scratching our head, and you know who else is scratching their head is the great Glenn Hoddle. 
Uh, Glenn Hoddle scratching his head with Levy and we've got some quotes from here and he says, I know Spurs fans are just fed up to the back of the teeth with it now and that's most definitely true. Uh, there's a big list of names that they have apparently approached but how many of these were realistic? We know for a fact that there's been three or four they've gone for. Daniel Levy has got a real hard job on his hands um, once he decided to sack Mourinho, he had to give some. He had to get someone to replace him, but that's not happened, and it's not a great position to be in. Uh, we've come to a crossroads. The stadium's fabulous. All the infrastructure is there, and what Levy's done is fantastic to a degree. The squad has to be the priority, um, but it can only be a priority if they get a manager in. The Kane situation needs to be dealt with eventually. It's a real conundrum where Spurs are at the moment. To think that there is only two years ago they were in a Champions League final. Now it's got to take going to take a rebuild. I don't care who comes in. Even if you had Shankly, Ferguson and Bill Nicholson all come in together as one, uh, that team is going to need changing over the next few seasons. That's why Kane, uh, Kane's saying he wants to move. I'm scratching my head to see uh, where Levy is going to go. I wonder if he'd be better going to someone uh, he's been, that's been in the Premier League uh, that has Premier League experience rather than going for a foreign manager. And then he says, Graham Potter at Brighton has done a great job, but whether he can cope with the pressure is another thing. Only Daniel Levy knows, and I get the feeling that he's chasing his tail at the moment. And that's pretty much spot on I from, think from he's, Hoddle, he isn't it? I think he sums up all Spurs fans' feelings pretty much in uh, in those quotes from uh, Glenn Hoddle. He definitely feel he read knows what is. He's a Spurs fan. He still is. We all know it. He absolutely loves Spurs. You could tell and by his reaction tell. for the Ajax goal as well. And if I've, and he's we're, he's just lost for words at the moment for what for we're how all lost for words. That's, that's, and, and I think he summed up perfectly you could have shankly ferguson and bilnick all rolled into one but that team's going to need changing and that's perfect encapsulation of where we're at at the moment levy chasing his tail at the moment that's what we're all feeling that's that's uh that's how i see it and he's not he's not be able to catch he's not gonna be able to catch his tail this rate uh um that's what i can see and i think glenn hoddle's got that absolutely spot on and um yeah, I think I think he might be better off just going for someone like Graham Potter at this stage than uh, going for a fancy foreign manager who's going to need a lot of change. You know, mm. that's, uh, maybe maybe that's right. I think anyone that comes in is going to need a lot of change, though. Even a Premier League manager. Yeah, but it's adjusting to a new league, and you know, what I mean, it's a different, maybe a bit different to maybe a manager who's with a pre- bit of Premier League experience. Yeah, maybe. All right, well, we'll have to see how this one rumbles on. It's been rumbling on for way too long now. Uh, but let's that was move... a month ago. It was way too long. <laughs> I know. Um, but let's move on as we're talking about the Euros and the Euro semi-final and final. It has been confirmed today that Wembley will be hosting 60,000 fans for the semi-final and the final. Um, it was rumoured that the they were planning or they're thinking about taking the final away from Wembley just because they couldn't fit enough fans in there or that they can fit them but in terms of the whole COVID rulings and all that kind of stuff but it has been confirmed today that there will be 60,000 fans in there for the semi-finals and the final which bodes well for next season yeah and you and you got to say as well um not only to bowl well for next season, but imagine a rocking Wembley if England are in the semi-final or a final. That would be unbelievable. That would be uh, that's something definitely to strive for, and so something that the players surely got to look forward to and think like, uh, if we can get to that semi-final in a, in a sixty thousand. Uh, um, packed out Wembley. I know it'll be thirty thousand empty seats, but at least sixty thousand there. That would be that could be something special. So let's hope England get that far. It's a big ask at the moment the way they're playing, but let, maybe you never know. Uh, it could be maybe, a massive just maybe like that old advert. Exactly, <laughs> football could really be coming home. Yeah. Um, if it's not coming home, if the winner's medal's not coming home, then they're definitely the uh, the semi-final and final are definitely coming home. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, let's move over to the last bit of update we've got, talking about the fixtures, uh, Spurs fixtures next season that have been moved because of the Europa Conference League, and that is our game against Wolves, a game against Watford have been moved from Saturdays to Sundays. So we're back to uh, Sunday football because of not the Europa League, but the Conference League. Yeah, this absolutely time. brilliant. Can't wait for the Europa Conference League. We have to get one more playoff to make it, make sure maybe we'll, maybe we'll strike out lucky. We'll lose that playoff, but uh, I'm not going to hold out too much hope. But yeah, looking forward to Sundays again next season. going to be great. Uh, yeah. And that's also after the first game of the season against Man City got moved as well. 
for TV. Yeah, for TV for that's four thirty on the Sunday. Apparently, these Wolves and Watford games are not going to be televised. All oh, right, that's what they said. So, um, I've got used to every game being televised, but it's not going to be. That's not going to be the case next season. Well, catch and watch along, and we are Tottenham TV. So you know where you to go. Uh, you know where to go. Uh, but anyway, there you have it. That is the Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any thoughts regarding any of the news we spoke about today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.